So we're entering a unit where we're going to be studying forces. I think you're going to enjoy this unit because forces are the cause of anything interesting in motion. They're the cause of accelerations. Back when we were just studying one-dimensional constant velocity motion, it was pretty easy to understand, but it was kind of boring. So if we want to understand complex things like why does stuff fly through the air, what does it mean to go into orbit, why does the uh, Earth move the way it does in the solar system? We got to understand changes in velocities, and those are called by, caused by forces. So the generic definition of a force, and we're going to see a whole bunch of them today, is any sort of push or pull. And right now, we've only really looked at gravity, and we've seen how it's affected a falling object. Now. Gravity, the force of gravity in everyday life is usually caused called weight. So what I want to do before we even get into other pushes or pulls, I want to make sure we understand the difference between the force of gravity, which is how hard the Earth is pulling us, and another related concept called mass. These things together are going to make up the, the bulk of this unit. So Here's a couple more definitions. Weight, the force of gravity, is literally how hard the Earth is pulling on you. Mass, in chemistry you've learned it as a measure of how much material you've got. And it's kind of like that in physics as well. But it's this other thing too that we call inertia. And inertia is a fancy sounding word, but it's just Greek for laziness. And what inertia is, what mass is, is how hard is it to change something's motion. So in order to demonstrate what mass mean is, I've got this device here called an inertial balance. And it's basically just a couple of pieces of metal held together by hacksaw blades. When I give it a push and let it go, it vibrates back and forth really, really quickly. And it does this, and the hacksaw blades are able to accomplish this, because it's not very lazy. It doesn't have a lot of mass, and it's really easy to change its motion. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this C-clamp um, on it, which is going to give it more mass and more inertia, and we'll see what effect that has on its motion. All right, so I've got the C-clamp on. That's increased its mass quite a bit. Check out what happens when I give this a push. It's a lot slower. And the reason is the C-clamp has added so much mass, and the C-clamp is so lazy, so much inertia, that it's a lot harder for the hacksaw blades to change its motion. The important thing to understand about mass is it's a measure of the material you've got. And it's an intrinsic property of the thing you have. It doesn't matter whether I did this inertial balance experiment here in the classroom or up on the International Space Station or on Mars or on Pluto. We would get the same results because the laziness of this C-clamp is the same in both cases. And the force being applied by the uh, inertial balance is the same in both cases. So mass it's the same everywhere you go. Now, the reason we mix it up with weight so much is how hard the Earth pulls you is actually proportional to how much mass you have. So this is the equation for the force of gravity here on Earth. You'll notice that 9.8 is hanging out there, and uh, there's a reason for that, which we'll get into in a little, little bit in the course. But the weight you have in the metric system is the acceleration of gravity, 9.8, times the mass of your object. We get lazy. We don't really like to write 9.8 so much, so we usually just abbreviate that as g. But what this means is that force is directly proportional to mass. So as we increase the mass, the force increases. So something that's more massive on Earth is also uh, weighs more. And that's why we sometimes confuse the two of them. The difference between weight and mass is subtle. 
And it's something that students all over the world have to work through the differences and why they matter. We'll get there. But in the United States, we have an additional challenge, which is that we have two different measurement systems that we use. And they treat the importance of mass and weight very, very differently. And sometimes that confuses students about which is which. And I think the best way to describe this is uh, by talking about apples. You go to the grocery store and buy some apples, they're going to charge you by the pound. Abbreviated LB for Libra, the scale. And a pound is a measure of how much the earth is pulling on your bag of apples. If the earth pulls on it harder, you pay more. Pulls on it less, you pay less. And that's a good way to sell apples because the more apples you've got, the more the earth is going to pull. But the earth matters when it comes to weight. You would never do this, but what if you took your apples up to a checkout counter on the moon? You get the same number of apples, but they would weigh a lot less. And that doesn't matter for for this topic, but for a lot of things that go to very different places in the universe, it's a really important difference. Also, how weight affects something is going to be different than how mass affects. I don't have a weight of a pound, but this brass cylinder is 500 grams. It's a little bit bigger than a pound. And here's the confusing thing. In other countries, they don't consider the weight all that important. They look at the more intrinsic property of mass. So if you go to buy apples in Canada, they're going to charge you by the kilogram, which is abbreviated KG. And I have my nice kilogram here. So that bag of apples, although it has a different weight in, on the Earth and on the moon and things like that, it would actually have the same mass. Notice that the kilogram is substantially bigger, about twice as big as the pound. Again, the difference is mass is a measure of laziness. It's how easy or hard it is to change something's motion. If I put my 500 gram or my pound mass on my inertial balance, it moves back and forth with a certain period. If I put the heavier kilogram mass on, it moves back and forth a lot longer period. It's lazier. It has more mass. And that the results of the experiment I just did would be the same in any location in the universe. So clearly there must be a metric unit for weight and there must be a US unit for mass. The metric unit for weight is pretty important to us, and you can see it from this equation. The force of gravity is mass times 9.8. So it's going to be the kilograms times 9.8 meters per second squared, and we call that unit the Newton. Abbreviated N. We'll use that a lot. Anytime we're talking about how hard something is pulling, we'll use that unit. It's a little bit unfamiliar to students. Uh, in class, I'm going to let you throw this apple around. It has a weight of one newton. It's about a quarter of a pound. So every time we're talking about a force, any push or pull will be in newtons. Just for completeness, I'll give you the last one. The US unit of mass, there's actually several. One common one is called the slug. And we won't use it uh, because we'll stick purely metric. So hopefully that clears you up that uh, units are different between different countries and that the rest of the world focuses more on mass where we focus here on weight.